Joe Biden is now all in on blocking China's future development, and with his unprecedented ban on microchips, the U.S. government has now escalated the China tech battle to a new level of friction, and there is no turning back for the foreseeable future. China is being painted as an enemy, when in fact it is a nation trying to raise its living standards through education, international trade, infrastructure investment, and improved technologies. In short, China is doing what any country should do when confronted with the historical reality of being far behind more powerful nations. Biden's latest moves against China are so severe that Chinese Americans working in China's semiconductor firms may soon be forced to choose between their citizenship or their job. And these restrictions couldn't come at a worse time for the global semiconductor industry. So far this year, American-listed semiconductor companies have already lost $1.5 trillion in market value. Joe Biden has proved that to stop a rising China, he is willing to sacrifice his own American semiconductor companies and as I'll prove in today's video, this could be disastrous for both the United States and the entire world. But first, I want to thank today's video sponsor, Surfshark VPN, for partnering with me to tell this important story of semiconductors and the future of our world economy. Surfshark has been one of the longest supporters of my content here on YouTube, and if you are spending time online, you must keep your data safe and secure. The best way to do that is with a virtual private network. Surfshark is offering all of my fans an incredible 83% discount, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video to hear more about today's special offer. Now, microchips are the fundamental technology of our digital world. Whoever has access to the best chips will have the best weapons, the smartest factories, and become the world leader. The United States and its allies lead the world in this field, but China is quickly catching up. Now the U.S. government is determined to do whatever is needed to stop China's rise. Just listen to U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, who stated, given the foundational nature of certain technologies, we must maintain as large of a lead as possible. In short, the Biden administration is trying to accomplish four objectives with these new restrictions. Number one, destroy China's AI industry by cutting off access to AI chips. Number two, block China from designing their own AI chips by cutting off access to American software. Number three, block China from using American manufacturing equipment. And number four, block China from domestically producing manufacturing equipment by cutting off access to U.S. built components. As you can see from these four objectives, it is very clear that America will do whatever it takes to stop China's progress. Gregory Allen of CSIS, a Washington-based think tank, recently stated the new policies are actively strangling large segments of the Chinese technology industry, strangling with an intent to kill. To escalate tensions even further, Joe Biden passed a guideline that immediately blocks any U.S. citizens or permanent residents from supporting the development of microchips that will benefit China. The Wall Street Journal recently reported at least 43 senior executives working with 16 listed Chinese semiconductor companies are now caught in limbo after this ban. And let's be honest, these latest restrictions were a strategic move from the Biden administration, who chose to launch this new economic war on the eve of China's 20th Party Congress. The Biden administration knew exactly what it was doing, but I think that the U.S. government is playing with fire. Xi Jinping will use America's new ban to demonstrate he was right about America's intentions for many years now. Simply put, the U.S. doesn't want a win-win situation. It wants to suppress competition and ensure America always remains on top. The U.S. government often says one thing and does another. Look at this tweet from Joe Biden last month when he advocated that competition is necessary in a capitalistic market. It's no wonder that President Xi mentioned no less than five times in his recent speech that China must achieve greater self-reliance and strength in science and technology. But this new microchip ban couldn't come at a worse time for the industry. The two American companies hit hardest by the Biden sanctions are NVIDIA and AMD. Both of which are down 69 and 67 percent from their 52-week highs. It's interesting because in this battle of chip supremacy, it seems that the Biden administration is willing to weaken America's own microchip companies just to derail China's growth. We call this cutting off your nose to spite your face. Because in terms of share price performance and investor returns, American companies have actually been hit harder than their Chinese counterparts. Now that might seem ironic considering that these bans target China, but the stock market discounts the future and the stock market is projecting that the microchip industry will have a very difficult road ahead. One of the things that you often hear me speak about is the fact that we live in a global economy. We need global trade and commerce to survive in today's complex world. This is why I'm a very big advocate of the United States and China learning to work together. But after four years of sanctions and bans against China, many industries are starting to feel the long-term effects of this conflict. In this article from the Asian Times entitled Chip War Policy Hurting U.S. Firms More Than China, we learn that 
as the global economy weakens and U.S. high-end decoupling from China accelerates, the outlook for semiconductors continues to deteriorate. China is by far the largest consumer of semiconductors. It accounts for about 53% of the worldwide demand for chips. But with companies being cut off to this lucrative market, this will result in a major loss of revenue for many microchip companies who depend on China for a large portion of their revenue. TSMC, the largest and most important manufacturer in the world, recently stated, we expect probably in 2023, the semiconductor industry will likely decline. This unfortunately will start a vicious cycle of decline for microchip manufacturers around the world. With less revenue, less money can be allocated to R&D. And U.S. memory chip maker Micron recently told investors that the company's capital spending would be cut by a third, from $12 billion to about $8 billion in the year following. On a 5-10 to 10 year horizon, America's edge in semiconductor design and fabrication is likely to vanish. As budgets decline in the Western semiconductor industry, the damage to the U.S. and other Western economies is likely to be greater than the harm inflicted on China. One of the best examples is Korea. In this article from the Korea Jung An Daily, we learn that Korea feels betrayed by its ally and is fighting for workarounds that would allow companies to continue sourcing heavily from China. This is exactly exactly what I mean by living in a global economy. A power struggle between the United States and China has immediate effects on other countries. The United States is Korea's largest military partner, but China is Korea's largest trading partner. The reality is, is that Korea needs a strong relationship with both the United States and China for its future success. If America wants to continue down this road and increase conflict with China over microchips, the effects could be devastating. Two years ago, a Boston consulting group study warned that an all-out U.S ban on chip sales to China would eliminate 37% of the revenue of U.S. semiconductor companies, lead to severe cuts in R&D and capital expenditures, and also the loss of anywhere from between 15 to 45,000 highly skilled direct jobs directly in the U.S. semiconductor industry. But don't worry, Joe Biden and the Democrats have a master plan to fix all of America's semiconductor problems. Back in September, you might remember that President Biden announced a plan to invest $50 billion in chips. But when you break down the numbers of this plan, it's actually quite shocking. Here is a tweet from David Goldman, an author at the Asia Times. He states, The Biden Chips Act proposes $11 billion for semiconductor R&D, over five years. Samsung alone spends $16 billion a year on R&D. Of course, Biden spends $30 billion a year to forgive student loans. And the world literally might be laughing at us when I show you the final example of just how extreme and quite frankly, how desperate the United States government has become to stop China's growth. Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn published this article a few days ago, along with some of the biggest anti-China hawks in the U.S. government, including Tom Cotton, Marco Rubio, and Ted Cruz, all of whom wrote a letter to President Biden asking him to take immediate action to halt Huawei from building a new microchip factory in Shenzhen. Just think about how absurd this is. U.S. Senators are asking our U.S. President to stop China from building a factory inside of China. Just think about that if it was the other way around. Can you imagine if Chinese government officials wanted to stop America from building a factory inside of America? Of course, that would never go. But again, this is the levels of desperation and quite honestly, just complete insanity that the U.S. government is going on right now. We truly are in uncharted waters and witnessing this new conflict between the U.S. and China. My hope is that one day we can learn to focus on improving America first at home because this is the foreign policy that America needs much more than any ban on Chinese semiconductors. Everyone, today's video was about technology and one of the key pieces of tech that I use literally every day in my life is a VPN. I first started using a virtual private network in China to access some of my favorite websites around the world and even living full-time in America right now, I still use a VPN every single day to keep my online data safe and secure, and also for some amazing other features. Let's imagine that you want to come to Las Vegas and stay at the Caesars Palace Hotel. If you visit Google and other travel websites, it will slowly start to increase the price on you, but simply turn on your VPN and you will instantly be a first-time visitor to the website and lock in the lowest price available. Surfshark has been a longtime supporter of my work here on YouTube, and they are offering all of you an incredible 83% off the retail price and an additional three months of service for free. If you're in the market for a VPN provider, please give Surfshark VPN a try because it helps the channel out here and I know it's going to be a product that you're going to enjoy. Everyone, thank you for spending time with me here on YouTube and I look forward to seeing you all in another video soon.